so thank you very much for um, coming along to the session. Uh, what I want to do is talk a little bit about the area that I get involved in. And uh, as John has indicated, my field is wireless power transfer. So my interests are, are doing something which people actually believed wasn't possible for, for many hundreds of years, which actually is kind of exciting because it gives you a lot of room to move when people don't believe that you can do it. But it is based on science, and uh, the great thing is it's based on two well respected people, Ampere, who said that if a current went down a wire, you would get a field in the air, and Faraday that said if you brought a coil into that field, you'd collect something from it. The difficulty was is they weren't able to do anything useful with it. And so a lot of our work has been around making this possible to actually um, to, yeah, making it really possible to actually use this technology for all sorts of applications and solving popular problems. Um, and to do that, we can, actually, we can actually put it into lots of places where people uh, thought you couldn't transfer power. The, the project I want to talk about today is one <coughs> which has taken my interest for 20 years. The longevity of these projects are interesting. And, um, but more focused around the last decade in, in practice. And it's a vision of a future city where we are looking for uh, uh, enhancing the use of electric vehicles. And uh, a lot of the issues with uh, people want uh, and using them was the concern about tethering these vehicles to cables where people nowadays actually steal the cables. Uh, there's all sorts of things because copper is a short, uh, you know, it's very high resource. And, uh, and taking it to something which is invisible, which city planners have been working on they want to clean up the landscape. And there's a lot of interest in doing that by the huge number of challenges. And so we started down this pathway um, to try and make this happen. Part of the driver that we push for, it's a difficult driver to push in New Zealand, but more easy to push when you're overseas and you look at the population, is the emissions that you get, which principally come from uh, the power and transport section, and, uh, and the whole goal here is to say, well, if we can clean up these emissions, uh, we, it's a great driver for electric vehicles. Uh, but, um, and, and the other aspect of it is we realise with our Kyoto agreements and the like, that we can't do that with uh, just cleaning up the vehicles that we've got today. So uh, we are looking, obviously, to power these vehicles and to actually do it uh, without using conventional generation, which we're typically running out. So we've got this problem that we need to bring in the green energy sources, the ones that are, that are, not, are, are cleaner um, than you know, traditional um, conventional means, or that we actually can't bring, um, like we just can't bring any more hydro in, into our mixes. Uh, but these systems are very fluctuable, and what we've got to do is try and get these fluctuable energy sources and bring those across to electric vehicles and uh, this growing demand for power, and it happens to be a really nice mix to bring together, so it's a nice vision to sell. So we started off with these kind of visions, and, the, and, and we, we, we pushed to try and get people to get involved in us. Now, it, you would think that would be easy, but it's a bit like kissing frogs, trying to find the fairy princess and getting warts. Um, people, people really don't, uh, it kind of, the vision becomes quite large, and what you find is that um, people sort of, can believe in a certain vision, but actually when you tell people you want to take over the world's um, uh, vehicles and, and sort of uh, influence the way roading is built globally, they start sort of getting backwards a bit. Um, we uh, had, to, first of all, to prove that the technology was viable. And so in 2009, we showcased uh, the fact that we could actually power an electric vehicle across a, a foot at the same efficiency as a plug-in charger. And that was, uh, we were kind of told that they, we, we were the tricking people or could it really be possible. But we went from that um, to launching a company and showing that we could actually do this with pads on the ground and actually uh, seriously charge our vehicles. When we talked to the car manufacturers, they said they'd been there, they'd done it before, they didn't really see this really changing. Interesting thing is, five years later, they told us this was the no-brainer technology that they would have to take on board. Um, and we went from a, a case of launching a company to selling it, which sounds really strange to do, but keeping all of the uh, intellectual property. And in doing that, uh, that enabled 
a, a global vehicle to actually take the technology forward, but the research is done here. And uh, the research is done here to try and, um, and develop what we're going to end up with in this technology in the next 10 years. So, interestingly enough, from a state of 10 years ago, the car manufacturers say they would never see this technology in their lifetime, they now have nearly completed the standardisation of this technology for uh, electric vehicles. And so the question uh, that I wanted to talk about today was where are we trying to take this, this technology? And it's really a, quite a challenge taking it in the future. The, the, the drivers for electric vehicles and the drivers for this technology are, are very societal trends around us. The problem is that we, as a, and we can see the pressure in Auckland, but this is happening globally, people are moving into cities and the urbanisation of that is causing all sorts of po problems, which are population health problems. Um, there's all sorts of air pollution issues we're having to deal with. The health costs are predicted to, to, to go uh, really astronomical. But alongside that, you can see the infrastructure strain is going up. We're looking to actually grow the number of vehicles, more than double it, um, by 2050. And if they aren't electric vehicles, we're in trouble. And uh, our vision is to try and en encourage electric vehicles to be used. Now, the, the challenge is not just stationary parking, but to be able to transfer power when vehicles are moving into lighted areas or actually when they're driving along a highway. And the aim to do this is to try and take the technology so that we don't have to have a huge number of batteries on the vehicle. We can just charge them little and often. And it sounds simple, but it's not. Um, there's a lot of people now starting to believe in this vision globally who are starting to work on it. We're uh, still at the forefront of the technology, but I can tell you it's a, it's a race. And it's an exciting way, and there's lots of questions of how to do it. Um, we need to try and find a way of transferring power in what is a very conservative envi environment, and people don't like digging up their roads. We need to look at all of the extending it around uh, services like rail, buses, and the like. And we need to try and find a way to actually integrate that with, with the, with the uh, systems that are in place. But the real challenges are in the next slide, and uh, is that we need to work towards highway power as they're driving along the, along the road. And to do this, we need a lot of help. Um, as you can imagine, we need to, we need to energise a vehicle as it's travelling along the highway at 100 kilometres an hour. Um, we know that highways of the future are working towards automation. They're working towards vehicle recognition and billing. But the issue we've got is it's not just one vehicle on the road. We've got trucks, we've got um, small cars. Um, the system has to be designed for the smallest vehicle that handle the largest truck which is high off the road. That's a challenging uh, thing. It's got to be able to deal with energy demands of these vehicles which are, are varying and demanding. The grid supply, you can imagine what the impact of this would be on the grid supply in terms of the energy mixes that people want. And it needs to be robust and reliable. And of course, people don't like you digging up their roads. Um, will we degrade the road surface? Will we actually um, will we actually enhance the road surface? Will we enhance the road mix? So the challenges we've got around working with people are huge. We need to prove economically that it's viable, but equally we need to actually solve all of these problems, which are actually a long way outside my expertise. And so um, people who are excited about such a vision, I'm certainly keen to talk to. And I think that's probably enough.